Aloha. Welcome to American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And today's title is Twitter, Home Sweet Home for Extremists. Um, now that Elon Musk owns Twitter, um, according to Mr. Musk, that um, it's a full free, free arena of free speech, um, we're starting to see examples of certain hate groups take advantage of that. Um, Anti-Semitic comments are up 61% since his ownership took place. Um, racial slurs against Black African Americans are up about 1,500 posts per day, and the list goes on. So to discuss that, I have with me my esteemed guest, our special guest, Jeff Portnoy, and my faithful, trusty co-host, Jay Fidel. Good morning to one and all. Morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Hey, Jay, um, with Elon uh, Musk's purchase of Twitter, how does he keep the platform from being bombarded from extremist hate groups like we're starting to see already in this short uh, tenure of ownership? He doesn't. He's, he's like fine with that. Seems like How do you know that? It. Well, he's not taking any steps to prevent it. And he's terminating people all over the lot, including his uh, standards committee. Um, so, I, you know, it's predictable that, um, you know, these hate groups are going to come on Twitter. And they are, as you read. There are a lot more statistics, too, that have been reported. Um, so what we have is, um, you know, you know, it's like when you go out on, on, a, on a hot summer evening in August and one mosquito finds you and a minute later, million find you. That's what's happening. They're all buzzing around and coming in for it. So, uh, and, I, and I think, you know, maybe there's a method in the madness. Uh, maybe he has concluded that uh, ultimately his advertisers will come back and he'll make a lot of money on Twitter. After all, there's an awful lot of people who are members of Twitter and, um, and, and that, that's an attractive market. Um, so if the advertisers come back, he's going to make a lot of money. I, I, I think it, must be a strategy like that. But he's not trying to stop him at all. You know, one thing I was reading here the other day was, um, you know, he made his announcements about the free speech arena um, being held on Twitter. Yet at the same time, he's concerned because he's lost a lot of advertisers. So he's introduced the concept of you may have freedom of speech, but you may not have freedom of reach, which is to say his um, access to comments like that may be well buried within the bowels of Twitter, that they may not rise to the surface. What do you think about that concept, uh, Jay? Hmm. Um, I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm I didn't not, explain it all sure that well. I'm not sure it's going to work either. <laughs> I'm not sure it's going it, to do whatever it's supposed to be designed. Well, the, algor the algorithms you know, make things rise or fall within a, a particular website. And the way he's constructing algorithms, I guess, or the intent may be, and I say maybe, uh, that if it's uh, hate, feats, hate speech filled, maybe the algorithm pushes those way down um, on the bottom of the food chain. Oh, that's interesting. You automate it and you fire all the people uh, who are supposed to develop and you know, deploy standards uh, within Twitter. Uh, clearly, it's not working yet. Maybe in the future, or maybe he can perfect it. Um, you know, there's a thing called the social network analysis that the um, intelligence agency use, and it, it searches on keywords. They try to find terrorists that way. Um, so maybe he could, uh, you know, use that kind of uh, approach, maybe. And uh, maybe with AI, you know, he can spot the, uh, the words that are, uh, you know, uh, problematic and uh, and uh, use um, and use um, that that system um, to exclude people who uh, are spewing hate speech, but I don't think he's done it yet, not effectively, and and I'm not sure it's going to work anyway. Uh, what the, the, all the trends are is that every, all the mosquitoes are coming around. Mm -hmm. All right, hey Jeff, um, you know Elon Musk has fired a gaggle of his content monitors. Uh, what's your take on Twitter? with the absence of these monitors, and to what degree do you think Twitter now becomes the Wild West for anything goes as far as free speech? Free speech. Free speech. 
As long I as kind of predicted you would say that, but I thought I'd ask I mean, it. I, I mean, I, I don't get this at all. I don't. What's the difference between posting so-called hate speech on Twitter and Nazis marching through Skokie? Okay. I mean, it's just a new technological tool that allows this speech to be broadcast to lots more people. But so what? Well, okay, so because it is social media and therefore it is affecting the general public or c could be affecting the general public, um, what makes Twitter, Facebook, Instagram any different than ABC, CBS, NBC, um, or any other media content that has some regulatory uh, provisions to it? Well, there are no regulatory provisions that restrict the kind of speech you guys are talking about. There's some case law, which we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. right. Not all speech is permitted. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. You can't use language that could provoke someone immediately to violence. You know, but this whole concept of censored speech, which has taken over the left, is quite offensive to me. And it's not what this country is all about. Yes, there's more access to it. I agree. But that doesn't change the nature of the First Amendment. And ABC, CBS, or any other entity can put restrictions on. They're entitled to. They're not the government. So they can say we're not going to allow this or that. I, I got that. But regulatory uh, prohibition on Twitter or somewhere else. I mean, you know, I'm not a Musk fan. And I think he has other things in mind. But the fact that, you know, people are using Twitter to do what they would otherwise do on a street corner. Now, the one thing I do have an issue with is anonymous speech. I have a problem with that. And I think that certain types of speech, which should be allowed, should still not be permitted anonymously. I think people should be able to know who it is that is making anti-Semitic statements or, you know, anti-Black statements or Muslim statements or whatever. But, you know, there's all this outcry. And, you know, there, there is a movement. There's been a movement. It hasn't yet succeeded in Congress to overturn the Communications Decency Act in certain parts and put restrictions on internet speech. Um, and I think that needs to be continued to be debated. But, you know, I, 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 I think there's a slippery slope mm -hmm. to hire 20 people to decide what speech should be permitted or not to be permitted. To me, that's worse than allowing speech, which is not otherwise actionable. That's why I'm not in favor of anonymous speech. I think the speaker or the poster should be responsible for what he or she says if, in fact, it crosses the line. Look, let me ask you this, because um, this will be very educational for me to hear your answer. What is the difference between speech that is seditious in nature um, versus speech that is seditious in nature yet calls out for immediate action? Well, where's that? Where's that boundary line, so to speak? You know, it, it, it's not easy to define, and courts have struggled with it. Uh, you have to read the case law, and, you know, you may not agree with an opinion in one case that seems to be contrary in opinion in another case. There's no bright line on lots of issues dealing with speech. But generally, if a court were to find that speech would incite somebody to violence, it can be prevented. Now, you know, the left likes to say that any speech which someone finds offensive should not be permitted. The question is, who decides what's offensive? Who decides whether the person who says it's defensive, uh, offensive is really finding it offensive? And, you know, words to me are words, and they can be combated with other words. It's, it's when you know, you, you, you stand on the corner and say, let's shoot the president, probably not going to get much protection if it seems to be real and it seems to be someone who is inciting someone to do something like that. But for someone to say, 
you know, I don't like Jews, which, you know, I find terribly offensive, but, you know, fight it back with words, not with prohibitions, whether it's done by the government, which is really bad, or by a group of 30 people who are hired, or 2,000, how many does Facebook have, to decide whether something should be permitted or not. So, you know, this is all a reaction to Trump uh, and, and what he did. Uh, using Twitter. And, you know, you got to give him credit because he figured out how to get 30% of the population to follow everything he says, most of which is false. So anyway, look, I'm a free speech guy. I've yeah. been for decades. <laughs> and, and my views are not shared by by even people who have the same political views that I have. Mm -hmm. Well, one last point on on uh, something you said here. You said timing. What is the difference between um, speech that someone acts upon immediately versus speech that took place, the same words that took place, and someone acts upon it within two months? Very fascinating question. And I think that's part of what's being debated at Justice Department uh, as they look into January 6th. And I don't have, you know, I certainly don't have an easy answer because I don't think there is one. I think you can say if it's immediate, it's going to be, be able to be uh, prevented. Uh, the speaker could be arrested or whatever. But if someone says something today and someone acts on it two months from now, there's no way to prevent that other than to stop it from being said in the first instance. First place, yeah. And I just think it's a slippery slope. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, I, it, 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 I, I challenge anyone to define What's offensive speech, unless you define it as something that makes somebody else feel less worthy versus threatened, really threatened. So it's a tough, it's a tough conundrum. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your answers. I appreciate it very, very much. You know, I wouldn't disagree with a lot of what Jeff says. I mean, the First Amendment is, is sacrosanct. But in the year uh, 2022, there is a huge what 2023 is the case soon will be. There is a huge difference between the guy in the street corner or writing a letter, or even a letter to the editor, um, and a guy who's on social media. Social media has taken us to a level of communication. You can shake your head, but it has taken us to Well, that's what they said when they invented the printing press. I mean, you know, it's just technology. What about the printing press? And people were able to print 10,000 pamphlets versus a guy on the corner screaming to two passerbys. Uh, come on, Jay. Um, what I was saying... Uh, what you, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I lost not. control. <laughs> <laughs> you're used you know, to it. You're used to it by now. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's true, Jeff. <laughs> by all means, Jay, please technology continue. Technology <laughs> now goes far beyond the printing press. <laughs> go ahead. Interrupt me. Sorry. No, I don't want to do anymore. <laughs> The technology goes global, and the technology we know is being read by people as their sole source of information. They take it for gospel. Uh, Trump didn't start that, but he certainly exacerbated it. And so what we have now is a sort of communication mechanism that we have never had before. We have the ability to reach the whole world off our phone, standing on a street corner. That's different than you know telling passers-by you want to do something bad. The other thing we have, and we talked about this a show or two ago, is the, the notion of scope, stochastic. Stochastic is the dog whistle thing. But I don't have to say that you guys should all go out and do an insurrection. All I have to say is that you should be mad, you should be angry, you should fight like hell for, you know, for me, for democracy and all that. Um, and you know, if, you, if you say, well, it has, to, it has to have a name on it, it can't be anonymous, that doesn't solve the problem of some guy standing in front of the Capitol building and saying, let's fight like hell. Um, and, and you don't have to stay and, you know, get your weapons together. I'll meet you in, in the rotunda and we'll shoot the place up. You don't have to say that. Um, you can use the dog whistle and that works. It has worked and it will work. So we're in a different place, Jeff. And as much as I also like the First Amendment, think the country is built on it, 
I am very worried about that. I'm worried that Congress hasn't really developed an understanding how social media works. Social media hasn't developed an understanding of its power. And uh, you know who's un- you know who's getting the idea? It's um, it's uh, 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 it's Twitter. Twitter is getting the idea, and and Twitter is is uh, he didn't buy it for uh, for a drill. He bought it um, for advertising revenue. He bought it to expand his uh, marketing group, his marketing area, and he is doing that. I suspect that even though the initial reaction is negative and. You know, like people like ThinkTech don't want to hear what he has to say, don't want to participate in, in, in Twitter. The fact is, every day I get, you know, dozens of messages from people who do participate in Twitter. And uh, I don't trust any of them. Some of them may be correct, but a lot of them are misleading. So, you know, what we have is, um, is a new world. And uh, what we have is, is the autocrat's best tool. Uh, Musk is going to make it that way. He is making it that way. He offered it to uh, to Trump. Trump hasn't fully accepted that, but I guarantee you guys, and I'm willing to bet a pizza on it, uh, in two or three weeks' time, Trump will relent and he'll come back on Twitter um, because his uh, you know personal um, uh, uh, social media platform isn't going to do what you, Twitter you, can do. You, you, you cannot restrict speech. What, what I'm saying is that I, I would like to see Congress get better informed. I do not know the solution. Uh, the point about uh, AI and spotting, you know, negative words, um, um, using social networking analysis, uh, you know, that's probably a part. Story. What's a negative word? Sorry. What is the I negative can't word? Use, I can't use certain words. What? I have a combination of words. Uh, this is exactly what the intelligence agencies do ah. to catch terrorists. So if well, I say I'm going to blow up, a well, you're now you're gonna... talking about something totally different. Uh, I, but what's you know you have thirty people sitting Sam, in a room. Why don't you why don't you let Jeff go on and then I will go? Okay, I'm done. Go ahead, Jeff. You cannot restrict speech based upon the hurt feelings or the lack of mental capacity of the listener. I'm sorry. And when you say it's, you seem to be suggesting that, that, that wait, way. it wait, divides wait. the country. He's it interrupting me. It enhances groups that will, you know, bully to start and then attack people and kill them. Uh, it, it, it has already shown us that it can do that. Yeah. How do you think these groups communicate? How do you think they put the insurrection together? What without, insurrection? Without social media, Jeff. without Twitter, the insurrection would not have happened. Hang on, this, this is how you Let me ask you a question, a, Jeff. A civil war in place. It is happening in front of our eyes, and we cannot let this mechanism be central in the in the under you know the under undermining of our democracy, which a it has already shown it can do, and b which is which which it is doing now. It is doing now, and will do more. Elon Musk is going to take it right there, and we will all pay a price. We cannot afford to lose our democracy, and social media is the way. Congress has got to find a way, or think tech has to find a way. Somebody has to find a way, and I'm not talking about hurt feelings. I'm talking about organizing groups that undermine democracy. That's what I'm talking about. Jeff, let me ask you very quickly. I mean, you, you do know, and I know you know that you know words have emotional impacts. It's in many words. Uh, in fact, there was even court cases back in 1969 that words um, basically uh, worked their way around the conscious, um, rational thought process right to the fist, right to the emotions of an individual, human being. So words do have impacts. And it's more about just hurting someone's feelings. What about those words and how they're used or going to be used on Twitter? Mr. Fidel, in his rant, used an early example. It was a long time ago because I, I think I'll he be was clear that that um, what I, I don't feel that I ranted anything, but I do feel there are those among us who <laughs> engage in rant right here on Think Tech. Go ahead, Jeff. We know what you're doing. No, we don't. Not yet, but we're going to figure it out. Go ahead, Jeff. He early on, I think it was an hour ago, used an example of let's get angry. That's the example he used. He would like to prohibit 
someone from saying to a person, let's get angry about the state of our government. That in Jay's mind is an insurrection. He said it. He didn't put it together that way, but that's what he said. That's crazy. Of course, every day people go, let's get angry about the governor. Let's get angry that we don't have, you know, rail. Or, I mean, you know, you, you, you're yeah, trying you, you will have to agree with me that the country is divided. Of course. Many, many, many divisions. And it's always been Those divided. Those divisions are exacerbated by it social was... media and speech. And, you know, I, I think Tim is really hitting an important point. Tim's Why not allowed you... to speak. Go ahead. Not yet. Sorry about that, Tim. <laughs> I'm trying to help wow. you, Tim. <laughs> Language has power. Yes. And dog whistles have power. And you know, you're a lawyer. Every word counts. Yes. And you can string them together to have the desired emotional effect by the listener. Yes. And that's what's happening here. Now, and so what? Your theory about the First Amendment, it may be a little dated. I'm not saying you're dated, Jeff. I'm just saying that your theory about the First Amendment may be a little dated. What is my theory? It is that we should all get into the, what do you want to call it, the, the community conversation. And if somebody says something that we don't like, then we should respond to it. I don't know about you, but I don't have the time for that. Um, I don't think any of us have the time to spend on the street corner arguing with essentially millions of people. Um, I, I think that's so so impossible um, to reach a balanced result. It's so impossible Jay, to reach good policy. Last you time I checked, Jay, way. Jay, last time I checked, you were not storming the Capitol. You've read the same words. No, but uh, I think uh, what you're <laughs> suggesting is I should get out there and for every you know anti-Semitic comment, for example, that respond. I should I should right. go after that person. Sorry, Tim. I don't have the time. That's all right. I my show's been hijacked, but that's all right. I don't mind. I love it. But <clears throat> barring that, I'd like to ask Mr. Fidel a question. Oh, please don't. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Jay. <clears throat> you won't get a rant, though, I tell you now. I guarantee it won't get a rant. So here's here's an observation I've been making, or I have seen uh, performed like a maestro by Donald Trump, is he makes an inflammatory statement, a hateful statement, hate speech, I don't care what you want to call it, and then he walks it back when the reaction from the public is severe. He walks it back by saying, ha ha, just a joke. Just kidding. So let That's me read. Marjorie let me Taylor read. Hang on, Green let did. me read Marjorie Taylor Greene's statement. Yeah. And she did the exact same thing. She goes, I want to tell you something. If Steve Bannon and I had organized that January 6th, we would have won. Not to mention it would have been armed. And then when the reaction was severe from uh, media and everyone, uh, she goes, don't you guys know sarcasm? I was just kidding. What do Marjorie, you think about that, that technique on free speech? Marjorie Taylor Greene is a member of Congress. That's because, correct. Because the voters in her district put her there. Right. We've talked about this before. You guys keep criticizing the mouthpieces, and I understand it, but they're there because the majority of people who voted in their district voted them into Congress. Uh, so they are reflecting the beliefs, the whims, the right. craziness of the people in that district. That's Jeff, where the problem lies. Jeff, there's wait, one wait a minute. You there's, put hang that on. question to Jeff, me. Jeff, there's one thing you didn't mention. Every member of Congress took an oath to office to defend the United States Constitution. So there's a there's a, a filter of responsibility other than the voters that put her in that seat that she ought to adhere to as a member I, of Congress that took the oath of office. What do you think of that? It, I agree 100 percent. And there's no question that there's at least 30 legitimately insane people in Congress, legitimately crazy, probably are very close to actually having themselves thrown out of Congress. Of course, it won't happen because they protect their own unless they're caught with a nine-year-old of the opposite sex. And even then, they're not likely to get thrown so out. What you're saying is there's no way to stop her. That she can No, there is a way to stop her. Run somebody against her that the majority of voters are going to vote for. You know, I got to say, that's not going to work. That's the, that's it's not the way work our country. for any of those 30. Thanks, thanks for an idea that will not work. 
Okay, well, Jay, let me ask you there this. There has to be a code of conduct for members of Congress. And Correct. somebody I think. has to enforce so I, the code that's of just conduct. Me. Jay, what about the technique? Enforcing the code of, of conduct. What about the technique of making seditious like statements? I didn't say seditious, seditious like statements. And then walking it back saying, can't you guys take a joke? What about that technique that Donald Trump mastered quite well? Well, I, you know, there should be a code of conduct. And let me say that if I cry fire in a uh, crowded movie theater, and then I say, wait, 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 I was only kidding. I was only kidding you guys. It was sarcasm. I didn't mean it. Does that get me off the hook? No. Um, I, you know, I, I really. Or say bomb on an whole... airplane. Just kidding. Just kidding. It's not going to work. Yep. Um, but, you know, I think I think we have well, to have a code of conduct. And if somebody crosses that line and we three have not determined where that line is, actually, but there is a line and should be a line and somebody has to draw the line and enforce the line. And uh, right now we don't have that. And so I have no can't... question. I agree with you a thousand percent that she should be at a minimum censored. All right. Not because just of this statement. That's not going to happen. And th- well, then blame the majority in the House of Representatives. What What do you want? Who do you want to make that decision? I don't, that- know, I don't know, Jeff. I just know we need a system here. Now, now, you know, yes, you can say that Congress should find the line and force the line. They didn't have you know, it. But for- they're not going to do that. They didn't and do it with Joseph Musk, McCarthy. You know, I, Musk I- is clearly not going to find the line. And there are going to be people on Twitter who call for the most outrageous divisiveness in our country and break our country up. Let me say also that we are forgetting, we must remember that Vladimir Putin has all kinds Putin? of tools. How did we get uh, to him? As I was saying, as I was saying be- before I... I've lost control of this show, <laughs> I can say. He, he How about the a... Wizard of Oz? I mean, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jay, finish up your comment. I'm going to go to Jeff, and then we've run out of time. Go ahead. He's a master at using social media. You guys know this. And he has used it, you know, from January 2017 on forward to turn Americans against Americans. He's an expert. He's got a building full of technology guys in Moscow who do this, not only in the United States, but elsewhere. And he's proud of it. And he's involved. So I said, oh, OK, well, you guys, you know, you don't want to talk about it. Vladimir Putin. It's not really relevant. OK, it is relevant. But what's interesting about it is that you can be Vladimir Putin and you can achieve divisiveness using social media, which he does. Nobody will argue that. Not even Jeff. They could have used radio, too. And they did. It's just they a are. new technology. They it's are just, using radio. Well, maybe we should do away with radio then. That's the next show. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jeff, um, yes, we what can I do? Time. Oh, Guess my what? God. I want to know how many minutes he used versus how many minutes I used. Who has the clock? You know, the, the next show, I'm going to dedicate 28% of the show just for you, Jeff. <laughs> what is your last question? Aren't you doing friend? that already? <laughs> my last question is the following. Yes. Um, okay, so I'm going to take a guess here that you probably won't have an issue. But what, to Jay, the question I asked Jay. What, it's, what do you say about seditious talk that is walked back when they get a strong public reaction uh, by just saying it was a joke, it's sarcasm? I don't agree with that at all. And I think if it was seditious, you ought to be prosecuted. All right. If she says it's a joke or not, you guys have given two prime examples, and clearly it wouldn't work, right? Then you have a bomb on the plane, and then when the marshals come on going, I was just kidding, or yelling fire, and then after everybody runs for the emergency exit, say, oh, I was, I was bored with the movie. I mean, you know, it's no different. So I, I think... Well, I assure you that you could think of words as I could, as Tim could, that would have the same effect as a straight statement of sedition. Um, and, and that's what Trump did on January 6th. Um, if you take the individual words, it doesn't amount to sedition, but if you take the whole package... You know, and Ari Melber has made this case on MSNBC. His, his state of mind and the relationship, but, his stochastic relationship it, he has with his followers, it, followers, it turns into a statement of sedition. If there was proof, and I believe there is, forget the storming of the Capitol. That is not the purpose of what occurred. 
The purpose was to stop the legitimate swearing in of a new president and the timely transition under our constitution. That's the act that I think is actionable. They didn't just storm the Capitol because they were unhappy with the weather. They were trying to stop a lawful activity. And that's what those proud boys, girls got convicted of. And I agree with that. So the seditious activity, in my humble opinion, is not trying to get into the building. That may be trespass. The seditious activity was what the intent was, which is actionable. Would you indict Donald Trump for January 6th? No. No. Would you want to indict Donald Trump? <laughs> I don't think we have to January worry because I think you should get indicted for something that's much clearer and easier to prove. And that's taking classified documents. Yeah, it's easier. Slam home. dunk. It's a slam and, and, dunk. And mixing it with his Macy's bill. That's that's what I. <laughs> he think. doesn't shop at Macy's. He doesn't well, go to the shop. Wherever he, he, he has people to do that for him. All right, we have run out of time. No, like how could that happen? I do not know, Jeff, but we're going to investigate that after the show. I would like to ask Mr. Fidel for his last thoughts and comments pertaining to this topic or any other topic he may think of. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> um, I am very worried about Elon Musk. I am very worried about Twitter. I think they, they, those uh, he has no, no interest, no concern in trying to hold negative speech down, incendiary speech down, divisive speech down, and seditious speech down. And uh, he is not going to develop any systems. He's throwing his systems out. Um, so we are going to take the full thrust of what social media can, can do to us. And one of the questions you raised, Tim, is are, are other social media uh, companies are going to follow? Are they? And the answer is, if, if Twitter makes a lot of money, they're going to want to make a lot of money. And they, they may, may very well be. And they may follow a culture that allows and encourages exactly that. So somebody has got to step up here. Somebody has got to recognize that we are living in 2022 uh, when the technology has a different effect than it did before. All right. Thank you, Jay, very much. Uh, Mr. Portnoy, would you like to have the last word? No. Would you please have the last word? <laughs> I think any legitimate listener understands whose position here is correct. And I, I don't see any need I'll to agree have, with that. I don't have any need. Look, I, I, the only thing I agree with with Jay, not the only thing, but is that the new technology makes it easier to get your message out to more people. They said the same thing with television. They said the same thing with radio. They said the same thing with the printing press. They said the same thing with the Pony Express. We've heard it for decades. And so, yes, the new technology makes it easier, but it doesn't mean that there should be restrictions on speech, which is otherwise constitutionally protected. I am done. Thank you. Well, that makes well, all three of us. Because we've run pony, out of time, Jay. Back to the Pony Express. Well, that's you brought up Putin. I have no to... idea. <laughs> I'd like to quote that, but not, not going to. So... <laughs> I would like to say, I'd like to thank our audience for watching a engaging topic. And There's no show. one left. No and one left watching. Actually, it was a debate. It wasn't a quarrel because it had arguments behind it. <laughs> so an engaging argument between Mr. Fidel, Mr. Portnoy. This is American Issues Take One. I'd like to thank Jay Fidel, my co-host, and Jeffrey Portnoy, our special esteemed guests. And I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. Won't you join us next week? American Issues, take one. Aloha.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.